Adagucia B. Medaguia B. Wamni Jushine Magia Beach. Nakoda Gemacha no Hudeshana Gemach. And a chinja be un spea kia bichan, jena conia un chungu bicteno. Ne chinja we choi chaga stenwa chiampi. My relatives, uh, my name is Little Eagle. My Washiju name is Roger White. I reside here in Fort Peck. I'm a Red Bottom Assiniboine, one of the bands, the 33 bands of the Assiniboine. And um, I instruct with the uh, children in the teaching of the culture and languages um, for about 11 years here in the public setting. Um, you know, they depend a lot on what we do. Um, you know, they're our future, and I've uh, invested a lot of time and, and efforts in our culture and languages in these past few years. We had a lot of great teachers and instructors. And in this venture that I've been on, we've uh, sponsored quite a few um, gatherings. And in these gatherings and the things that we're doing, uh, we're always um, looking for curriculum. And the, in, the, in this competitive world that we live in, we need some type of um, boost in, and we need to evolve uh, with Indo-European education. Uh, that's what's been handed down, that's how we all learn. So what I've done is I try to stay fact-based and evidence-based and, and with that it's, 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 a, it's, it's a been a, uh, an adventure, but it's also been uh, very challenging at times. And so we move towards a more place-based approach to some of the things that we've been doing here. I and my brother, uh, Michael Turcott, and, and um, other individuals are kind of jumping on board and seeing different methodologies, not only in the language, but how to apply those into the classroom, how to assess them, things of this nature. And these are what teachers need, especially in the public schools, because this is all we have here. Head Starts, public schools, colleges, universities. And so they have a strict guidelines or standards and, and, and we've been taking a, a hard look at these and, and, tr and trying to develop our, our own way, our own history, our own science, our own, and we can do that. Every tribe can do that. But I like to stay fact-based, evidence-based projects. So with that, I'm gonna show you one um, that we've done. We've worked with um, around eight years ago uh, these storytellers were coming around and NASA was very curious about some of the constellations that are happening um, above us and some of the stories and things of this nature. So this is kind of how I started going into the, the realm of even taking a look at constellations and astronomy. But we have stories, all First Nations have stories of what's happening above. One example is um, Ochangusha or Chankahu, the backbone of the sky and um, that is the Milky Way. And if you're familiar with the Milky Way, I'm pretty sure everybody is, you see this haze of kind of green and blue light above that's in the night sky. And in June 21st on the summer solstice, this Milky Way goes into position and it kind of forks like this. Eh? So I'm gonna draw that real quick for you. On uh, June 21st, the summer solstice or summer's eve, all cultures recognized the solstices. We have two, one in the summer, one in the winter. Uh, December 21st, December tw uh, June 21st is our summer solstice. Winter solstice, December 21st. We have fall equinox, spring equinox. So we have these certain times of the years that these ancient ones long ago did. And, and the stars is, is a peculiar, they don't change. They haven't changed for thousands of years in, in the astronomy. Uh, so all of these stars are still in those fixed positions. That's, that's pretty unique. So the Milky Way, if you can imagine, June 21st, it sits to the south. It splits like that, eh? And what that represents for us, symbolism. We got to remember that long ago, we, we, we did everything based on symbols. We didn't have writing and stuff, but we had symbols, we had signs. That's how we communicate it. Hand signs. Hand signs is very huge too. And this is another thing we incorporate into the classroom. But right here, the Milky Way looks like that. Now, if I were to flip it up like this, it becomes the Sundance pole, the center pole for Woti Jaga or a medicine lodge. And on this medicine lodge, tree, 
go like that. They put a road on it, a red road. That red road is their walk from this earth to there. That design, that symbol. This is the red road. That's why we call it the red road, because it's in the sky. So I'm just giving the example of some of the symbols as it relates to some of the stories that have been passed down. So again, the night sky, the Milky Way, the center pole, the design, the design, check that design out. The symbol here in the south for our people is very sacred and holy. Cinnaboins always face their lodges to the south. There's a constellation down here in the southern sky has three things in, in Piaka, his belt. That is this individual, the arm up like this, something like that. Orion or Osiris, maybe you heard him. That's been big. I'm, I'm not an artist, so you gotta excuse that. But in any case, Orion, Osiris in the south are the one-armed warrior holding the bow, whatever. In, in, in this case, all First Nations people had this type of symbolism happening. Put it on their shields, paint it on their, their, their wioti, wiozi. So in the south, we have this individual, Hokshitogapa, first boy. And this teacher come from the south. And we call this place, that design, E. And we'll get into that here in a little bit, because I want to talk about some of the I guess you would call it the, the sounds that vibrate and echoing through this room right now. And we did a study on sound. And so I want to show the symbols first. That symbol, that triangle, that symbol. It's, it's going to be really important. I need you to follow along. So in the study of the stars came another study. It's called somatics. Look that up. It's called somatics. It's the study of sound. A uh, study of vibration, actually. Because all sound turns into this vibration. And if it's vibrating, it can create something. And how they measure that, scientifically. Uh, you can sing it, you can speak it. So what we did with some of these, um, these um, NASA individuals, and it wasn't the guys that fly up into the... To the uh, go check out the moon and the stars up there. It was the individuals that observed. And there was this one young guy that was really intrigued by Native America. He came into one of the sweats and, and, and he was like, hey man, we're studying somatics. Let's go check it out. So we did. And in the study of somatics, the study of sound, we recorded elders. Um, we recorded um, young people speaking our language, Nakonia. Then we uh, recorded some music. And in this music that we recorded, the songs that we sing are all come from the mouth. Powwow songs, sweat songs, and prayer songs, food songs. So we had these songs that were happening for us. And we recorded it into a microphone. And if you look this up, they do it the same way. And from this microphone, it goes into this machine that makes this vibrating energy. And in this machine, we put a speaker and a bowl on it. And in this bowl would make particular designs depending on what type of energy was coming out from these words. And I want to show you something real quick. So we did the study and we did the experiments. And this is what's called experiential education. That's why people love science and they get to do experiments. And through that process, they retain that a lot better than just reading a book and taking a test on a paper. So. I, I watched these old elders long ago. I watched them raise pipe. I, I grew up this way of life. And when they do, they usually go to six points, a point above them, a four points all around them. Some call it the four corners, four cardinal directions, what have you. And below, one point to the earth. All right. I'm going to draw that real quick. We are three-dimensional thinkers, and we have to try to wrap our minds around that if we can, not just reading words, we, we're three-dimensional beings. 
So there's a point above you and points all around you. Six points. And imagine yourself in the center. Now, I'm going to connect the points of the top to these four that are around me. So when, I, when a man is raising a pipe or an elder or medicine, whatever, he offers above and brings it to his center, to that pipe. He offers it in four directions around him. So we're going to connect those four directions to what's above. Everything is connecting back to the center. Now, we connect all four directions that are around this individual as he's offering, bringing it back to the center. And then we connect all four points around him to the things that are below. Take a look at the designs here. There's six points. Some people call this a star, a Jewish star, things like that. I'm going to show you, this is an infinite design because I can continually make this design. I can keep it going and going and going. On and on, forever and ever and ever. So that means this design, this pattern holds infinite energy and infinite wisdom, infinite knowledge, infinite, just infinite. Now, when we did the study on somatics, like you can do this study. This don't take my word for it. Do the study. Try your language. Do it. And you'll find that certain sounds and certain songs and certain things are going to hit a particular energy and it's going to make that design try to pop out of that bowl, that speaker. Trying to pop this design out of the water. That's crazy. And depending on the energy that comes out, the designs get more... Uh, immaculate. There's more energy. 12 point is all these different things coming out. So it's, it's holding something very unique, hidden within our language. Something is hidden in there. So again, it's symbolic. And we're, we're going there. Check these designs out right here. This design, like the Washijus call this design, whoop, Infinity comes from this design here, that hourglass. It's crazy to me because it's right, it's sitting right in front of us. I don't, I, it's been sitting there in front of us this whole time. And if I didn't take this venture of bringing in the 21st century to something ancient as our language since the beginning, we wouldn't be coming up with these type of concepts to integrate into the 21st century for the future of our people. But this is just the beginning. This is just one thing. There's more things that we can discuss that have to be fact-based, evidence-based in the culture and the things that we're trying to do. And this is just part of it. And so this design, let's get back to this design, this meaning, this uh, symbols. Because again, cultures long ago would paint symbols, paint themselves, paint their whatever they had, their horses even, their homes. This symbol, if it's infinite, and we knew this long ago, we were able to tap into this particular type of energy. And we knew that from our language, we knew that from our culture, our songs, our ceremony, there had to be a reason for it all. And we're not trying to find a particular reason, we're trying to bring to light that there's more to the language, scientifically, that's with evidence, things like this, of this nature. So let's go back. Now you know the design. There's an infinite pattern that comes from First Nations language. And again, you got to give this a shot. You can't take my word for it. Do the experiment. Give it to your students. Let them do it. It's all over the internet. There's many ways to do this experiment with water. Different other things. You can do it with powder. You can do it with salt. Uh, you lay it on pans and, and let it vibrate on the pan and watch the, the salt take shape and, and, and uh, make these particular designs. So again, don't take my word for it. It's there, and you can do this experiment, just like we did. So, back to this particular road here of the Milky Way. There's a symbol here in the south, and you know what that is. O Orion's belt. And then you get like a buffalo constellation. I'm, I'm not a good drawer. 
You get like this bird constellation in the west for the thunder beings. You get like this Heoka constellation up here. There's a man that up here that walks with a staff. Mind you, this is only in the northern hemisphere. This is the only constellation that moves back and forth. This constellation over here, the North Star, kind of like this, um, Inkdomi, the spider, uh, Nebula, it's for the female fire keepers. Then again, Czech Bobby, the twins, our duality, water. Um, the Dipper, there's stories about the Dipper everywhere. Here's an interesting fact. June 21st, check all of this out. You don't have to take my word for it. Check it out. Do the research. Do the studies. In the night sky on June 21st, summer solstice happens. And right here, right alongside of here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, perfect circle is formed. And in this circle that's formed, that's visible, that shows it, this Milky Way moves back and forth like this. Back and forth. That's how it moves. June 21st, it moves furthest southwest as it can go, and it stops. Then it starts making its way back this way for winter time. It's like a, it's like a clock. But it reveals a lodge, 12 poles, uh, uh, sweat, uh, big lodge, or they call it medicine lodges. But all of these are markers, locators, stories with all of these. I can't get into all of the stories, but they all have a story. They all have a teaching to our people. And it's really unique, and we're missing something. We've been doing a lot of things, and we're just missing a little bit. Eh? And I think that if we go back to the, the simplicity behind everything, the language, the methods, assessments and don't be getting caught up too much in that western educational model then things will be a lot easier people won't be as scared to maybe venture out and try certain things and it's really simple but try to stay fact-based try to stay evidence-based that's what i encourage and a lot of these signs a lot of these symbols that were handed down from long ago are still here today and we just got to pick it back up. So that's just part of somatics, the study of sound, that how you can integrate it into astronomy, pretty much anything, especially the language and especially your music. And I know all First Nations have music and language. And this is just one way that we get the interest of our youth and young people, our young instructors, to take that initiative and go try the experiment. So with that being said, my relatives, you know, Jeje Nawagihich, Pinamea.